Hey, what's up guys? Matthew here and today we're going to do another quick tricks video and today I'm actually going to show you guys uh, how to write a script. Now, writing a script is one of your most important things on creating a movie. It's one of your first steps. Obviously, you want to create your treatment first and then you want to write your script out uh, and this is going to pertain to all the different actions, maybe some shots, uh, scenes, the title of your movie obviously, and dialogue. So today I'm actually going to be using Adobe Story CC. Now I used to use Celtext, which is a free software that you can actually get off of the internet. Uh, just go to Celtext.com and then a C E L T X. Uh, you can also use other ones uh, like Final Draft. All right, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to open up a script that I had already written. It's already finished. Now, it's a very, very short script, but I'm going to teach you all the different things. Now, one of the first things i got to say when writing a script is if, if you don't know everything that you need to do, write it your own. Uh, it's always going to be your own for your production. So write it in a way that you will understand and you know that your crew is going to be able to understand uh, after you explain it to them if need be. So I'm going to go on up. Go ahead and open up the script for my newest short film, Dead Eyes, which we are hoping to make sometime soon, but I have no problem with releasing the script uh, because I think that this one is just a little short one. So uh, it's best with the visuals. So as a short film, I think it will still be held up. So anyway, this is Dead Eyes, uh, written by myself. All right. And I have this little comment written up at the top. If you want to just write these little general uh, comments just for in your script for a different reference, all you have to do is left click in Adobe CC, and that's Adobe Story CC, uh, and then it'll give you these list of different uh, formats for different aspects of your script, your scene heading, your action, your character, parenthetical, uh, dialogue, transition, speaking extra, which I don't really know how to use speaking extra, uh, but I don't use it anyway, I don't really need to, shot, and general. So general's generally going to look like your actions like in terms of format but they're not so it can get a little bit confusing but up here at the top uh, I'm going to explain a little bit on why I put this up at the top later on when it gets to uh, making the film but for right now I'm just going to leave that be so bye bye to that thing whoops all right now the very first thing that you want to start off is with your scene heading. Now, when you go to your scene heading, the very first thing you're going to put in is interior, exterior, or I slash E, or E slash I, and that is depending on where the scene takes place. Now, interior means that that scene is going to take place indoors. Exterior, outside, I slash E, meaning the scene will take place indoors and outdo outdoors in the same scene, but it'll start off inside and then go to outside or flip flop back and forth depending on how complex that scene is. And if it starts out outside and then goes to inside, you want to put the E first. And then the name of your scene. Now this here, I have it named as Jack's car. That's where it takes place. And then at the end, the time of day that it takes place. Now, if I just go ahead and just get rid of that, it'll give you a list of all the different times of day. You can choose an afternoon, continuous, if it's continuing on from another scene, uh, day, or continuous, actually I think, grows throughout the day, or I'm not entirely sure. Day, evening, later, moments later, morning, night, next day. And these are very, very useful. It just gives you all the ones that you're ever going to need. Now, mine took place at night, so I'm just going to leave that be. And then right here, I actually have a shot that I want to remember when I'm making my film. So that way, I can just go to the scene in my script, and then... This is how I want this scene to start off at. Now, at the beginning, you're given different options. BCU, CA, crash in, creep in, close up, cut in, dirty shot, ease in, extreme close up, establishing shot, which the establishing shot is used for, you know, establishing your scene. Um, it's a little bit complex to talk about it, but an establishing shot is usually used for setting up uh, where this scene is taking place at. Um, I used extreme close up, but if we go back a little bit, let's go back in eye level, high angle, long shot, which is a longer shot, 
a low angle, which means the camera is at a low angle looking up. Medium shot, mid shot, that usually pertains to torso and up on a person's body or mid chest area and up. Uh, There's a list. I mean, we could go on and on and on with all the different ones. Wide shot. There's a long list. But for right now, I'm just going to go back and select my extreme close-up. And then over here, it's going to allow you to choose what camera you want uh, this scene or this shot to be filmed with. Uh, mine's just camera one because we're just using one camera on it. And then after this, technically you're not supposed to put these in there, but this is where I actually am uh, changing how I want this done. Now, over here, generally what you would do is just describe the movement, uh, what exactly the camera is doing at this particular moment, whether crane or dolly, but I actually deleted all that out so that way I could remember exactly what I wanted it to do. So... Whoops, looks like I got a message from Mitch. I'm just going to close that out, so that way we're not bothered by that again. But anyway, right here I actually have it, I want an extreme close-up on Jack's eyes, and then pull out to a mid-shot. So after that, I decided to get right in to describing the scene, the actions. Now, in the actions, this is where you're generally supposed to get very, very specific about how you want everything to look, and you want each section to be kind of its own section. So right here I have about five, what is this, like five sentences in one. You want about generally three to five, you know, that's like a rough estimate of how you want each part, and you want it to narrow in down on all these different set of sets of actions that correspond to one another, and then I have these other things going on. So I decided, okay, that's describing this one piece of it. Now I'm going to press enter again, and then enter again, and then describing new actions that are within the same scene or same section. Uh, like I said, friends in the back wave around in shock with mouths wide and lunging back and forth in their seat. Jack remains motionless. Now, when it comes to a script, you want to get as, as specific as possible. You want to describe the scenery around them, uh, what exactly is the weather doing if you want an emphasis on the weather within that shot if not you can describe certain things that you really want some emphasis emphasis on in the screen so that way you have good references for laying out all your different shots and doing your storyboard and then I went on again to describing other different shots that I really want to narrow down and really want to remember that are very important to the storytelling of my short film and then over down here, if you see, I actually have a transition, and this is a cut to. And normally, it would just be cut to, colon, and then that would just be it, but I put in black. Now, I believe cut to, you would put that there, and it would just cut to the scene. I didn't want it to cut to the scene. I wanted it to cut to black, and then the next scene begins. Now, as to how long you want that black screen, whoops. Didn't mean to do that, but you can add comments over on the side on each line. So, oh, hey, in this line, I have a comment that I want to remember. Blah, 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 blah. You can put that in there with Story CC. Now, you can do this other cool thing where if you want to remember how long you want the black to be on there generally off the top of your head, you can put like parentheses five or like five seconds, five minutes, and then that's like a good way of being able to remember. You can do that with a shot list. You can do that with a storyboard. Storyboards, that's very important with doing. Um, and then I go on to my next scene. And you want to come up with different names that are very, that describe, uh, when it comes to the scene name, you want to describe what the emphasis of this scene is on. Like, what this is. What is this scene? And this is the crash scene for me. This is what, this is the over, uh, overwhelming setting and name that really describes what the scene is. So... Just moving on. There's not much more to talk about, really, but I do have a lot of shots that I want to emphasis on, uh, put emphasis on, uh, because that's what the majority of my film is about. It's a lot about visuals. It's a lot about storytelling. And if you actually notice, there is no dialogue in my entire movie. And I actually have always felt uh, very deeply, very strongly, actually, that a masterpiece sort of film is a movie that can give exposition, tell the story with as very little dialogue as possible. You can understand the emotions of the characters, their actions, what's happening, everything without dialogue. So that w 
And obviously there are stories that have dialogue and that's very necessary. It also adds depth to the character. But to something like this, I wanted everything to be dealt through visuals because I, I feel like that's a masterpiece sort of a thing. You see a lot of strong scenes in movies that have no dialogue. Uh, and it, it really pulls you into the moment because you can just read the expressions on these people's faces. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in the way their muscles move, the actions they take. Uh, obviously music and uh, or lack of music is going to help tell that story as well but you want to use music as a tool as well that's just a little comment for later on in post for you so moving on when writing dialogue if you wanted to add some dialogue for instance whoopsies didn't mean to do that you could do that so all you have to do, add a character. And then this is where you can just create your character's name. And it's always going to be in caps. So let's say Jack says something like, oh man. My butthole hurts. And it's always going to be centered. Now obviously Jack's not going to say this, but uh, just figured I had to write something. So he's in the shower. It's a shower scene. It's just like, ouch, my butthole hurts. Yes, I'm stupid. I get it. I get the idea. But anyway, that's just a quick example of how that works within a script. Uh, the characters' names are always going to be in caps. And another thing is that when you're first introducing a character in a movie, in your script for the very first time, have their name in caps. So that way you know, okay, this is where the first time this character enters in the movie. Jack, all in caps, sits motionless in his car seat because this is our first time getting introduced to him. And then after that, within your script, anytime Jack is referenced, his name is in lower ca uh, lower, lowercase. Blech. And that's basically it. Let me check to see, is there anything else? Anything else? Parentheticals, okay. So let's go back up and let's just see. Hmm, this is where you want to describe how a person is saying their dialogue, what emotion they're, uh, they're portraying within their dialogue. Like, uh, let's see here. Blood fills Jack's hands with, with drops synchronizing in their falls to the small pool. What should Jack say? Well, let's not, let's not write anything right there, actually. Let's just go ahead and get on to doing that, and like, I think, oops, whoops, there we go, parenthetical, and then let's just say he's being sarcastic, sarcasm, loudly, whoops, loudly, screaming, if that counts, but that's just describing how that character is going to say it, it helps adding more specifics to your script so that way you're better to understand them and that way your cast is better to understand them and all your crew is as well you really want to be very specific as possible with all your writing aspects as well and then down here i have another transition this one's fade to black and then after that i just put the end because it's the end of the script there you go. So that is actually it. Another comment, actually, that I want to add in here real quick is that your pages are numbered. And another thing to keep in mind uh, is that one script page is going to be around a minute. You want to think about this page is going to be about a minute long within my movie. So roughly my movie is going to be about three and a half minutes long. So there you go. So when you're writing your script, keep in mind that a generally good idea of how long uh, these different scenes, these different sequences are going to be is about a minute long. So about this scene is going to be about 30 seconds, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. That can depend on how you actually film it and what goes on in post. You can make things a little bit longer, but it's just a general idea for you when you are writing your script a minute long per page, roughly. So anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, Comment and subscribe. 
and watch the rest of our other videos that we actually have up. We have Boxed Office, Box Office and Big Asms up. We're always coming up with new episodes. And we have a new show coming out very soon called Does It Suck? Where we take movies that critics or other people generally said, oh, hey, this sucks. And then we review it and we find out whether or not, does that movie suck? You don't know. So, thank you guys for watching again. And I will see you guys in the next video. Reach production.